Let's look at Philippians chapter 1. And we're going to look at verses 12 through 17. Philippians 1, verses 12 through 17. Philippians 1, verses 12 through 17. All right, verse 12, it says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Praise God. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic behind prison bars behind prison bars grace and there are four prison epistles from the uh, apostle paul four prison epistles written by paul an epistle is just a letter and there are four prison epistles written by paul they are Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. The prison epistles are simply letters written by Paul while he was in prison. And there are four of them. One of them was written to his friend Philemon. All right. The other three, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, were written to the churches. And today we're... We're reading one of these prison epistles, these prison, this prison letter. Paul here, he, he wrote to the church at Philippi, and Paul began the letter by addressing the Christians at Philippi. Uh, he then, watch this, he then transitioned and he began to address the leadership at Philippi, uh, the bishops and the deacons and, and so forth. Um, he also reminded them of how much he thought about them. Paul is in prison now, so he, he has a lot to think. He has a lot of time to, to reflect. He has a lot of time to gather his thoughts, a lot of time to, to put pen to paper. He lets them know that they are always in his prayers. And Grace said, you do know that it is okay to pray for someone else. You do know that someone out there could really use your prayers. Here, what we see here from Paul, we see him having a pastor's heart. He's letting them know that not only is he thinking about them, but he's also praying for them. Paul is in prison and he's guarded by these Roman soldiers here. Their exact title is the Praetorian Guards. These guards, they're something like bodyguards. They're like elite soldiers of their time. You can compare them to like special forces of today or Navy SEALs of today. They are elite of the elite type of soldiers during that particular time. So here you have Paul in prison and he's writing this letter to the churches at Philippi. And it was the custom in that time, Grace Center, for a prisoner, watch this, for a prisoner to be chained to the wrist of the soldier. Okay? So here you have Paul writing letters 
while he's chained to a soldier. We're going to come back to that in a second. But watch this. As you continue to, to read the, the opening letter here um, of Philippians, while Paul is most likely chained to a soldier, he lets them know that the good work that Christ began in them, he's going to finish it. Uh, in other words, being that you're now saved, God has a hold on you. And he has no intention of letting you go. In other words, he's going to complete the thing in which he started. You see, we don't serve a God that starts something and does not finish it. We don't serve a God that dangles something in front of you and then he just takes it and pulls it back away from us. Paul said that what God has started in you, he's going to finish it. And he's going to finish it until the appearing of Jesus Christ. Not only that, Paul lets them know that in verse 7, that they have a special place in his heart. And the reason that they have a special place in his heart is because when Paul was down, they also was down. When Paul was, was hurting, they also were hurting. Therefore, Paul said that I have you in my bonds. But not only that, Paul was also grateful and appreciative that they stuck with him when he was out there spreading the gospel, defending the gospel, defending the faith. Paul realized that not everyone is going to stick with you when the chips are down. Not everyone who says they're, they'll ride or die they're really not a ride or die. So Paul said, I, I have you guys in my heart. But Paul also realized something else, Grayson, and that is, he said, we're in this together. He said, we are partakers of, or you guys are partakers of my grace. We're in this together. You know, during this pandemic, one of the, the slogans was, we're in this together. Meaning that we're all going through this same pandemic together. Didn't matter your race or your background, your bank account, your demographics. It, it didn't matter. Your political affiliation. It, it didn't matter. We're all in this together. We're all going through this pandemic together. Whether you thought it was real or fake, we're still going through this pandemic together. We're all in this together. So Paul, Paul is saying we're all in this together. Okay. We're out here spreading the gospel. We are, we're all being afflicted for spreading Jesus Christ. We, we're all in this together. Later down. In the letter, in verse number 12, he says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out, rather, unto the furtherance of the gospel. In other words, Paul is saying, uh, some things happened to me. I was mistreated. I was targeted. But things still worked out. Perhaps Paul was thinking about Romans 8 and 28, where it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Maybe he was thinking about Romans 8, 28. In that particular verse, Grace Center, the, the text, it says, his purpose, okay, uh, uh, things will work out according to his purpose, not your purpose, but his purpose. Not your plan, but his plan. But it will work out according to his purpose. And let me just make a slight detour in my little sermon on today and 
Let me just encourage someone on today and let you know that what you are going through, I want to encourage you and let you know that it will work out for your good. All right. It, it, it's going to work out for your good. And I'm not saying that the thing that happened to you is good, but God can use it for your good. Let me say that one more time. I am not saying that what happened to you is good because it may not be good by what they did to you, how they lied on you. How they mistreated you, okay? How they talked about you, how they have planned evil schemes and plots about you and, and tried to cause your downfall. I'm not saying that's good, but we serve a God that can use all of the evil tactics of the enemy and he can work it out for your good. Yeah. God can use it for your good. He can use a job loss for your good, a home loss for your good, a car loss for your good, a health scare for your good, people walking out for your good, people walking in for your good, the loss of a loved one for your good, the betrayal of a friend for your good. Whatever it is and whatever it was, God can still use it for your good. And the reason he can use it for your good is because he's good. <laughs> he, he can use it for your good because he's good. And because he's good, he's going to take what's not good and make it good. And at the end of the day, it's going to be all good. We serve a God. They can take the evil plots of man and use it for your good. Paul, Paul, Paul is in prison. He's confined. He's limited. He's on lockdown. But he's still saying <laughs> it's all good. Uh, but why is it all good, Paul? Because the people want to know why is it all good? Why are you saying it's all good. Well, well, um, it's because the furtherance of the gospel was not hindered. Paul is in prison, and instead of him thinking about himself, he's thinking about others. He's, he's thinking about others. Paul was in prison, and he's still focused on others. Well, how do I know that? Well, that's found in verse number 13. Verse 13, it says, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. In other words, Paul, he was saying that although I'm in prison, I'm going to make the best use of my time. And the only way I can do that is by letting them know the God that I serve. Paul was in prison, but every everyone knew that Paul served God. The guards and everybody in the prison knew that Paul was a Christian. My question to you today is, does anyone know that you're a Christian? Does anyone know that you're a believer in Christ? Does anyone know that you that you serve God? Does anyone know your faithfulness to the gospel? Paul said, I may be in prison, but while I'm here, I'm going to share the gospel. I'm going to share the good news. Because of Paul's boldness, because of Paul's courageousness, because of Paul's unwavering faith, because of his relentless attitude. Verse 14, it says, other believers also became bold. In other words, Paul wasn't in prison for being a lawbreaker. Paul was in prison for preaching Christ. And they thought, watch this, they thought they could shut up Paul if they put him 
in prison. They thought they could stop the gospel if they put Paul in prison. But it did not stop the gospel. It, it had the opposite effect. And because they tried to stop the gospel, the gospel began to spread even more. Some people think that they can stop the gospel, but it's going to just simply spread even more. And what we need, we need some, some bold believers who are willing to stand and proclaim the gospel. Paul is like, you, you put me in prison to, to hinder the gospel. You put me behind prison bars to prevent the gospel from going forth. But yet it just had the opposite effect. So here you have the gospel going forth. People are encouraged by Paul. And they say if he can still preach the truth while he's in prison, so can we. <laughs> now, of course, not everyone had good intentions on why they preached. Verses 15 and 16 says that some were preaching because they were envious of Paul. Mm. Some were preaching because they wanted to stir up some, some kind of strife with Paul. Now the text, it doesn't say how they were intending on doing that. It just says that their motive of them weren't good. But on the other hand, there were some who had some good intentions. They were sincere about the gospel. They were dedicated to to the gospel. Therefore, they preach the gospel out of love. Where it gets back to Paul about the, the two groups of people, all right? Um, the group that preached out of envy and strife and the group that preached out of love. What was Paul's response to the two groups of people? Paul said, as long as they're preaching Christ, the gospel <laughs> is still going forth. If it's sound doctrine, if it's not heresy, the gospel is still advancing. Paul said, I, I may be behind prison bars, but I'm still chained to the gospel. Hey, I'm still behind prison bars, but I'm, I'm still chained to the gospel. I'm chained to Christ. So, Although there are others out there who are trying to make my blood pressure go up, there are some out there who are trying to cause me to, to get migraine headaches uh, and, and cause me to be frustrated. Just preach the gospel. Because if you preach the gospel, I'm cool with that. Now, if you have wrong motives about what you're doing, well, one day you're going to have to stand before God on that. <laughs> but... If the truth comes out of your mouth, God can still use that to bless people. Ah, I said a mouthful and I hope you did not miss what I just said. There are some people out there who, um, who were not sent, but they just went. <laughs> okay, um, um, but, but watch this. Let's take a lesson for Paul now. Let's, let's look at what, 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 what Paul said. Paul is saying, okay, if it's not heresy, if it's sound doctrine, okay, uh, if it's furthering the gospel, let them do what they do. <laughs> I love the Bible, y'all. I love the Bible. Because right now we, I'm not going to say we, we know certain people who were just, who just went and were not sent. Um, um, but, 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 but Paul is saying, well, if the gospel is being preached, if the good news is being preached, leave them alone. One day they'll ask the God about that, but God can still use the words that come out of their mouth. <laughs> um, he can still use it to bless other people. Um, they may not be called by God, but if they're preaching the gospel, Leave them alone. Hmm. Just leave them alone. They'll answer to God on that, 
one day if they know they're not called. But if the gospel, if it's the truth, if it's sound doctrine, God can still use it to bless other people. That set a lot of people free. I know it. I'm teaching real good right through here. I know I am. But let me continue my little message on today. Paul says at the end of verse number 17, Grace, and watch this. At the end of verse number 17, uh, that he, 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 he set for the defense of the gospel. Okay? He set for the defense of the gospel. The Living Bible says like this. It says, God brought me out here to use me. To defend the truth. You see while Paul was in prison. He never complained. Um, he didn't mope around and say why me. Uh, but while he's in there. While he's in prison. He said God can use me. And God has allowed me. To come out. To spread the gospel. And to spread the truth. You see, they thought that they would stop Paul and push him and allow him to push the mute button. But Paul is saying, I've got good news for them. Because although I may be behind prison bars, I'm still going to defend the faith, defend the truth, spread the gospel, spread the good news. So I'm not going to push their mute button. And Grace and earlier, I, I told you about uh, uh, that it was the custom at that time for a prisoner to be chained to the soldier at that particular time. Uh, but 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 Paul, watch this. Paul was in prison for preaching Christ, and here you you have Paul chained to a soldier. And he's already in prison for preaching Christ. Mm. And he's still writing letters to the outside talking about Jesus. Don't miss that. Please, please don't miss that. Watch this. Paul is in prison for preaching Christ. He's chained to a soldier. Okay. And he's still writing letters to the outside, spreading the gospel. Soldiers over here, he's chained to the soldier. He's in prison for preaching Christ. Paul is still writing letters talking about Christ while chained to a soldier. <laughs> Paul is like, I don't care who I'm chained to. I don't care what they can do to me. What they can say about to me or what they can do to my life. I'm still going to write and spread the gospel about Jesus anyway. They can talk about me. They can lie on me. They, they can threaten my life. They can, they can put, a, put a mark on my head. But I'm still going to spread the good news. I'm still going to spread the gospel of truth. Paul is like, yeah, I'm chained to a soldier, but uh, I'm still writing to my people. I'm still spreading the word about Jesus. And you see, a lot of us, we worry about what people can say to us and say about us and do to us. Mm -hmm. Look at Paul. Paul, like, yeah, I know you're a soldier. I told you earlier that these were elite soldiers. Okay, these were not just your average, ordinary soldiers. They were the elite of the elite. But Paul is like, I don't care. I don't care your title. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you work for. I'm still going to put pen to paper about my Savior. No matter who, no matter how big you may be. No matter how many threats may come up against me, I'm still going to write and spread the gospel about my Savior. Paul is like, I don't care what you can do to me. And a lot of us, well, as a matter of fact, all of us can learn from Paul. Amen. Paul is bold. Paul is courageous. Paul, I don't care who you are. I may be chained to you. You can go tell on me. You can even take my life. But I'm still going to spread the gospel. <laughs> Paul is like, I don't care what you can do to me. I'm still going to write to my people. Paul said, I may be locked up 
and chained up, but I'm not going to shut up. <laughs> and the reason I'm not going to shut up is because my body is chained behind prison bars, but not my spirit, man. Hey, hey, that's another term. That's another term for the day. He said, my body may be behind prison bars, but not my spirit, man. I may be chained to a soldier who can take my life and he can run tail that, but I'm still going to spread the gospel of the good news. And since my spirit man is free, it doesn't matter where my body is because I'm still going to preach Jesus. Oh, I like that right through here. So you can go ahead and place these chains on me, but you can never place these chains within me. Hey, hey another turn for the day. You can do everything you want to do to me. My spirit man is free and I'm still going to proclaim the gospel of the good news. Yes, Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Paul is bold. He's courageous. He's proclaiming Jesus Christ. I'm coming to a close right now. I remember um, this song by Milton Bronson entitled I'm Free. Not going to sing it, I'll just say a few of the, the lyrics. It says, I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. Soul is resting, and it's just another blessing. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Grace Center, if you're behind prison bars, it's time that you're set free. If you know someone behind prison bars, pray that God can use you or someone else to set them free. And let me be clear about what I'm talking about. Because I'm not talking about a physical prison. I'm talking about a spiritual one. Amen.